My name is Dr. Nadia Ali. Welcome back. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, please subscribe to continue being part of this healing community where we share knowledge and research that we need to heal and sustain good health. I am a functional physician as well as a mindfulness coach, and my goal is to provide education and guidance to our patients, their families, as well as our community on how to achieve optimal health and wellness. We all have the ability to achieve optimal health by making simple, sustainable changes to our lifestyle. We can prevent and even reverse chronic disease. So let's get started. The topic that we have today is related to artificial sweeteners. Now we know that there have been several research studies that have been done looking at the potential health risks associated with consumption of artificial sweeteners. Most of these sweeteners were marketed to the diabetic patients because these sweeteners did not contain sugar and hence the um, assumption was that if we use sweeteners instead of actual sugar, then we might prevent diabetics from causing their blood sugar to go up. However, we have studies which have suggested that artificial sweeteners actually contribute to metabolic disorders such as obesity and type 2 diabetes. A study published in the Journal of Nature in 2014 found that artificial sweeteners directly change the gut bacteria, leading to glucose intolerance, a risk factor for diabetes. So clearly artificial sweeteners are not the best choice for diabetes. We also know that these sweeteners increase appetite. Even though artificial sweeteners are often used as a weight loss aid, some research suggests that they may have the opposite effect by increasing appetite. A study in the Yale Journal of Biology and Medicine in 2010 suggested that artificial sweeteners encourage sugar cravings and cause sugar dependence. In 2019, a study was published in a journal, Stroke, and found a link between the consumption of artificially sweetened beverages and increased risk of certain types of stroke in women who were menopausal. We also know that artificial sweeteners negatively impact our digestive tract. A study published in Molecules in 2018 found that low calorie sweeteners alter the gut bacteria and cause dysbiosis, a condition associated with obesity and diabetes. So we have a lot of studies which have looked at different sweeteners and their outcomes. The goal that we have today is to delve into uh, an important sweetener, sucralose, um, and we want to see and look at what the study shows in terms of its effect. Because now we are beginning to see that in addition to the other adverse effects, these sweeteners can also affect our DNA, which is a very serious concern. So let's get started. So what is sucralose, right? The so sucralose is marketed as a zero calorie artificial sweetener. It is 600 times sweeter than sugar. It was discovered in 1976. And it is made by processing the regular sugar, which is called sucrose. Uh, and in the process of processing the regular sugar, we produce this artificial sweetener called sucralose, which is used in thousands of food and beverage products worldwide. Because it's versatile sweetener, it maintains its sweetness over a wide range of temperatures and doesn't have a bitter aftertaste. So you'll find it in baked goods, beverages, also used in cooking and baking at home. Now, before we move on, we need to have an understanding of what are genotoxic chemicals. Genotoxic chemicals are chemicals that can cause damage to the genetic material in the cells. And when they cause the genetic, they, when they cause the damage, they basically cause mutations. 
and these mutations can lead to cancer. Unfortunately, because the, the genetic material is passed on from one generation to the next, genotoxins that cause mutations, that mutation can actually go from one generation to the next. Particularly if the mutation is occurring in germ cells, which is eggs or sperm. The genotoxic chemicals can cause damage to the DNA in multiple ways. The first way that they can affect the genetic material is by direct DNA damage, meaning causing a break in the DNA strands that we have, altering the structure of the DNA molecule. The second way the genotoxic chemicals work is they can indirectly damage the DNA by interacting with other molecules such as proteins or enzymes which then lead to DNA damage. And the third way they can affect uh, DNA and cause damage is by inhibiting the repair of the DNA. So with that in mind, let's look at the background of the study. So basically, uh, sucralose also contains a substance called sucralose 6-acetate. And this sucralose 6-acetate is what was the target of this study. We know that sucralose samples contain up to 0.67% of sucralose 6-acetate. And the study was to look at the potential damage of sucralose 6-phosphate. So the researchers wanted to understand how did this substance behave in our body and what kind of harmful effects it may have. This is particularly important because sucralose is so widely used. They wanted to know if it causes damage to the genetic material or DNA. So the study was done on rats. And they found that sucralose 6-acetate was present in the stool samples of these mice, up to 10% relative to the sucralose, which means that even though the amount of sucralose acetate in the sucralose is very low, it is possible that when that sucralose gets into our digestive tract, then our digestive tract can convert the sucralose into sucralose acetylate, which is extremely dangerous. They also looked at how that sucralose 6-acetate would affect the lining of the human intestine. by using a model we called a replicate. Replicate is a model where you actually have the um, stem cells create the intestinal lining for experimental purposes. So what are the study results? The study results found that sucralose acetate is definitely genotoxic. It actually breaks down the DNA. And the amount of sucralose 6-acetate in a single daily sucralose-sweetened drink far exceeds the threshold of toxicological concern for genotoxicity. We know that sucralose 6-acetate significantly increased the expression of genes associated with inflammation, oxidative, cancer, oxidative stress, and cancer. We also know that it led to leaky gut by damaging the intestinal lining. We also know that it affects liver enzymes and the liver's ability to metabolize different substances. So what we now know is that sucralose is dangerous for health, even in small quantities. So the question is, what can we do about it? 
So the first and foremost thing is to reduce or eliminate sweeteners in general, not just sucralose. Because as we have talked about this, there have been a lot of studies looking at all the different areas where these artificial sweeteners actually damage different systems in our body. We also need to be able to read food labels carefully, particularly when there's a claim that it's zero sugar, low sugar. We need to make sure that if the, if the um, label says zero sugar, then what has been used to sweeten the product? And if it is an artificial sweetener, we know that it's not a good idea because it can cause a lot of different organs to malfunction and damage the body. That is why it's extremely important to read labels. If you do not know how to read labels, you can join our grocery tour where we teach you how to read labels but also importantly, what is it that you need to have in your grocery basket and what you need to avoid? If you want to sweeten your food, then try and go for, for natural options like honey or maple syrup instead of artificial sweeteners. These natural sweeteners are less processed and they don't contain the same potential health risks as artificial sweeteners. However, you have to keep in mind that they're high in calories and need to be used in moderation. So research into the health effects of artificial sweeteners is ongoing and new findings are being published regularly. So it's very important that we stay informed about the latest research so we can make informed decisions about what we want to include or not include in our diet. One of the ways you can stay informed is by subscribing to our newsletter so that you get information about these new research studies uh, and stay on top of things. Very importantly, you also have to be an advocate for your health. Uh, you have to get involved in talking to your friends, your family, to make sure that they are able to protect themselves. But in addition to that, you need to be able to talk to policymakers uh, and participate in public consultations about food safety regulation. Uh, because it's very important that we come together to protect everybody. Thank you so much for being with us and we look forward to connecting again next week.